Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanak and Dialogue English. Pakistan has enough money when they want to steal money and send it abroad. Then they haven't, then they are billionaires. But when it comes to helping a neighbor, Pakistanis will never help anybody. And it is possible. Everything in Canada does not depend upon Justin Trudeau. There is the entire legal system that Justin Trudeau cannot influence. Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanak and Dialogue's English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. So friends, Matthew Miller, spokesperson for the Department of Defense, United States of America said in response to a question that the United States of America still maintains capability of carrying out operations inside Afghanistan. Now, this news was covered by the Dawn, which is uh, one of the top English newspapers or whatever little English newspapers and English media remains in Pakistan. Dawn is the leading light and Dawn says that this is what Matthew Miller said. And let me just read out the statement. Very interesting and then we'll dissect the statement. What does it mean actually? So, Matthew Miller, a spokesperson for the US State Department, made these remarks in response to a query regarding the recent terrorist assaults carried out within Pakistan from terrorist hideouts in Afghanistan. Nine soldiers were killed last week when terrorists assaulted a military facility in Zob, Zob, Balochistan. The military's media branch, ISPR, this is the Pakistani army by the way, or the Pakistani military. ISPR released a statement shortly after the incident expressing serious concern about the existence of terrorist safe havens in Afghanistan and urging Kabul not to allow terrorists to utilize their territory for carrying out strikes inside Pakistan. Now, in 2021, August 15th, you know, uh, the Americans left Kabul and uh, it was taken over by the Taliban. This was as per the Doha agreement and one of the chapters and one of the one of the paragraphs and one of the pages was entirely documented uh, in the Doha agreement and the documentation thereof was that uh, that uh, Taliban will not allow the land of Afghanistan to be used for terror activities against any other neighboring country. Now, they made it slightly loose, but neighboring country, Afghanistan has so many neighboring countries here. Iran is a neighboring country. China through the Wakhan corridor is a neighboring country. Pakistan is a neighboring country. Tajikistan is a neighboring country. And I don't know, many of the Stan, two, three more Stan countries are neighboring countries there on top, up north. So yeah, enough and more neighboring countries. So Pakistan had a very serious concern and Pakistan wanted somehow these attacks to stop because they were happening in bits and pieces. All along Pakistan thought, not thought, they were wrongly blaming India that because India has such a wide presence in Afghanistan so it is India that is funding various terror outfits to sort of uh, you know uh, carry out some sort of attacks against Pakistan. Now why did Pakistan make up this fake statement? It's important to understand this and I'm going to be uh, you know devoting some time in this episode to explain to you the background. Now India was partners with the Afghan government for various developmental works. We built a dam, we built their parliament, we built a library, we built roads, uh, you know, we built water tankers, we built schools, we built so many things. Upward of 3 billion US dollars was spent. The various Indian companies doing projects there and we handed over the projects to the people in Afghanistan. Now, when the Taliban took over, there was a massive celebration. We have covered this many times. I'll not, I'll not sort of uh, go over this point once more. But there were massive celebrations, right? So Imran Khan, the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, saying that you know, uh, true, true independence has been achieved by the Afghans, and that lady spokesperson of uh, Pakistan Tehreek and Saf Imran Khan's party saying that now the Afghans will get us Kashmir, and Kashmir will be quote unquote liberated from the Indians. The, the, uh, the tyrannical regime of the Indians, some nonsense. So all these things were happening at that point in time. The Indians were quiet. If we make a road in Afghanistan, to us, it does not matter who drives on that road or who walks on that road. Because once we have made the road, have we taken any money from the Afghan government? No. Have we taken any money from the Afghan government for making the library or for making the parliament house? No. This was a gift from India to our Afghan friends. That is it. We were not there for business. And this is what we did now. What is happening is currently in Pakistan is that the attacks have increased in spite of all the Indian consulates shutting down. The Pakistanis said there are 23 or 24 Indian consulates in Afghanistan. And of course, one embassy. 
Actually, there were four consulates, but Pakistani said 24. And 24 was the narrative which even Don was carrying and other newspapers and other media outlets were carrying. Why does India need 23, 24 consulates? And of course, these are headquarters of Raw and Raw is doing this and Raw is doing that. Pakistanis see Raw in their dreams. Now, what happened was essentially that India shut down everything and India left. After six months, the Taliban very quietly approached India and said, can you come back, please? So India said, why? He said, no, because... We appreciate the work that you are doing in Afghanistan. Not even six months, I mean before six months. Three, four months. They started making overtures to the Indians. That can you please come back? And we promise you protection, we promise you this, we promise you that. Why was Pakistan objecting? Why did Pakistan say that India has done so many wrong things? Why? Because Pakistan could not do the same thing that India had done to Afghanistan. Pakistan did not have the money or the intention, Pakistan has enough money when they want to steal money and send it abroad. Then they have, then they are billionaires. But when it comes to helping a neighbor, Pakistanis will never help anybody. So what happened in Pakistan was, Pakistan said, we are not going to build roads in Afghanistan. We are not going to create universities. We are not going to help them make a parliament or a library or a hospital or a dam, nothing. But India is doing it and India will generate outsized influence in Afghanistan. So let us keep on repeating that India is funding terrorists. India. All India was doing was funding the dam and the parliament and the library and the road. Yeah. That's it. So they created this whole image in the minds of their own people because nobody else apart from Pakistanis bought this propaganda. The Afghans did not buy it. The Taliban did not buy it. And after all, it's their country. They, if India is doing something wrong, they would know, right? They would know absolutely. Nobody said anything, not a pipsqueak. Out of China, out of China, out of Afghanistan, Nobody said, not even one statement. But Pakistan, no, India is doing this, India is doing that now. What happened was India left. And these, after India left and after the Americans left, which was, I think, a week apart or something like that, these incidents of terrorist attacks inside Pakistan, emanating from either Pakistan's own tribal areas or Afghanistan, they escalated. They escalated to such an extreme that you know, it became difficult for Pakistan to handle this. And one of the reasons was Imran Khan's policy of settling down TTP, terrorists in tribal areas, because they were Pakistanis essentially. So let's settle them down and all. Imran Khan was known at one point in time as the Taliban Khan. Pakistanis called him Taliban Khan because he actually thought that the Taliban model was excellent. And that is how a country should be. Uh, so uh, that is what Imran Khan said. So. These people were settled down. Now, these people started attacking the Pakistani establishment. They started attacking the army, the police, the people, etc. Right? Now, coming back to what uh, this spokesperson of the State Department of the US said, he said, we retain the capability to strike inside Afghanistan. We retain the capability. So, what's he talking about? What is he exactly talking about? Is he talking about the ability to strike deep inside Afghanistan? through drones or through fighter aircrafts? Has Pakistan secretly given a drone base to the Americans? Think about it. Why would he make such a statement? The question asked to him was something else. And the Americans are, I mean, nobody's fool. The question asked was, you know, what's happening and uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Taliban or the tehreek -e taliban Pakistan are using Afghan soil to attack Pakistan. And this was asked, this question was asked in light of the Doha agreement in which it was clearly stated that Afghanistan will not allow its land to be used for terror strikes against foreign countries or neighboring countries at least. Where does America come in? Is America saying that we are happy to carry out strikes inside Afghanistan if they attack Pakistan? Is that what the Americans are saying? Or if the Americans actually do that and actually start helping the Pakistanis, right? Will the Americans not have the right to ask the Pakistanis to give them bases if the Pakistanis have secretly already not given bases? Because this happened last time also. This happened last time also when Parvez Musharraf was the president and the military dictator of Pakistan. He gave bases to the Americans to carry out strikes after 9-11 you know, carry out strikes inside Afghanistan, which the Pakistanis had no idea about the Pakistani, uh, you know, civilian government had no idea. He was the boss of the government, of course, but nobody had any idea that out of some 
ऑब्सक्योर बेस इन बलोचिस्तान के ड्रोन वर टेकिंग ऑफ एट नाइट यू नो दे वुड टेक ऑफ एट नाइट लैंड एट नाइट एंड दे वुड हवर देयर और ड्यूरिंग ऑल थ्रू डे टाइम दे वुड बी देयर रोमिंग अराउंड एंड फायरिंग मिसाइल एक्सेट्रा एंड कमिंग बैक एंड पाकिस्तान मेड टन ऑफ मनी आउट ऑफ इट सो वॉट आर द अमेरिकन सेंग सेकेंडली श्योर the americans have their bases in qatar and they can fly from qatar but then they would have to take a detour the logistics are different in that case you know but and and in 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 all probability in all probability if they are taking off from qatar or doha they would have to either fly over iran which iran will not tolerate or they would have to fly over pakistan which pakistan will tolerate if they are given money iranians you give them money you give them diamonds gold it does not matter to the iranians if they don't like you they don't like you If they love you, then they love you. Iranians are pretty straightforward. Pakistanis are also equally straightforward. If you if you give them money, they love you. If you don't give them money, they don't love you. So here is ideology in Iran. Here it's dollars in Pakistan. So what are the Americans saying? Do they have a base inside of, uh, inside Pakistan? I would request Pakistani friends who are watching this video, please comment. So friends, in another news today, the NIA, the National Investigation Agency of India, has filed charge sheet against nine Khalistanis. And uh, I'll I'll tell you what this is about. This says. these nine terrorists belong to two terrorist organizations babar khalsa international and khalistan tiger force don't miss the names these names are supposed to strike terror and fear into those who take them you know take these names babar khalsa international so that is part of khalistani marketing harvinder singh sandhu lakbir singh sandhu and ashdeep singh these guys of the khalistan tiger force have been operating overseas from which they have created their own networks of operatives they have close contacts with drug smugglers and pro khalistan operatives in pakistan and other countries so this is what it says and uh, they say that the nia has also unearthed a complex mechanism of fundraising of bki and ktf the funds were being routed to india based associates through both informal channels as well as formal channels via layering and fund provisioning various means of money transfer being used so essentially all these guys like rinda and uh, arsh dalla so all these people were at one point in time involved in various attacks on police stations in india right and after that they they were gangsters all right most of these i i i would say 100% of these khalistanis not most but 100% of these khalistanis are criminals with a criminal mindset because that is they get funded through crime right they get funded through the drug trade and this is something that i've been saying on the chanakya dialogues for a very long time for a very very long time that the khalistanis have been funded you see for a very long time for a very long time the khalistani issue there were no attacks on consulates nothing how did it suddenly rise up these things have happened in the recent past few months they had stopped altogether for a very long time you know why they started all over again they started all over again simply because pakistan was removed from the fatf grey list please check the timelines please check the timelines you will find out that all these recent attacks have happened only after pakistan was removed from the fatf grey list which means that india is safer if pakistan is on the fatf grey list or black list the second thing which i'd like to tell you is that all these guys all these guys they were operating in india they were holding indian passports they did their crimes in india heinous crimes assassinations of uh, hindus prominent hindus in punjab right they were mixed up with gangsters of of all the states in north india right uh, haryana uttar pradesh rajasthan especially those in the border areas they were mixed up with them this is how they used to do drug running and gun running and one fine day these guys because why would canada give them a job they don't have any qualification why would a country a first world country like canada say oh welcome for canada to say oh welcome you have to play the victim card you have to play the victim card you have to tell him that i am a victim you have to weep like a victim you have to be like elhan umar you see that congress woman in in the united states of america you have to be like elan umar like she plays the victim card to perfection so these are small little elan umars right these khalistanis and in spite of being from the mafia in spite of being drug peddlers arm suppliers assassins murderers thugs these people got fake statements and fake certificates from 
certain politicians in Punjab in which they said that, oh, they are political workers and as political workers, they are being subjugated and they are being terrorized by the Indian state and the Indian state is very bad and the Indian state does not do anything for, you know, uh, uh, these people and these people are being crushed by the Indian state and they are actually political activists. So, guys like Rinda, okay, and guys like Arj Singh Dalla, they actually became political uh, activists overnight. These guys who are killing innocent people, doing drugs, supplying drugs, they became political activists and they found their way to Canada. Once they found their way to Canada, because Canada, you know, Justin Trudeau's government in Canada is being supported by a Khalistani. Please put up his name and his face on the screen. Editor sub, if you can please do that. Yeah, Jameet. This guy is a Khalistani, hardcore Khalistani terrorist radical. And he's the one who's supporting the government because that is a minority government. So he is getting all these Khalistani seats to support and somehow propping up Justin Trudeau's government. And this is how Justin Trudeau is in power. Justin Trudeau dare not take action against the Khalistanis because he will lose his job. That's it. So it's not about right and wrong. It's about power. And this is exactly what I tell the Indians wherever I meet them. It's about power. Forget about right and wrong when it comes to your country. Toko. Hit them hard. Hit them where it hurts. Use legal means. Use legal means. Don't use illegal means. Use legal means. Use the law in Canada to sort these guys out. And it is possible. Everything in Canada does not depend upon Justin Trudeau. There is the entire legal system that Justin Trudeau cannot influence. Use the legal system. File so many cases on these Khalistanis that they, they just park their Ubers outside the houses and they stop working because they have to court. They have to go to court. That is what you should do. Just keep on filing cases against these Khalistanis. So many cases, so many cases that, you know, because they keep on giving you the opportunity to do that. There is no dearth of opportunity in Canada uh, in, in sorting out the Khalistanis. Now, coming back to the point, this is what NIA said. So you create an ecosystem inside India, an ecosystem based on drugs, on violence, on assassinations, on political killings, on kidnappings, on ransom, on extortion. Then you play the victim card, you go to Canada, but your infrastructure remains. Your ecosystem remains and that ecosystem you lease out to the ISI in Pakistan so that they can send drugs inside India, they can send weapons inside India to conduct acts of terrorism, sell those drugs to India, get money from India and fund all that, you know, that quote-unquote Khalistan Zindabad nonsense that they do with their flags outside our embassies and, you know, throw stones at the embassies and take down our flag and burn down our consulates. That is how it is funded. It's called narco terror. And this is something that I've been saying for the longest possible time, ladies and gentlemen, that this is narco terror. These Khalistanis are drug peddlers. They are drug lords. This is what they do. This is how they make money. Ever heard of a qualified Khalistani? Ever heard of a Khalistani who said, I'm a nuclear scientist? Ever heard of a Khalistani who says that, uh, you know, I support Khalistan and I'm a top doctor? Ever heard? No, because these people are illiterate, uneducated thugs who have gone from India taking advantage of the weakness in the Canadian political system and they found home there and now they are spreading the disease from their pins. They are spreading the same disease there in Canada. This is exactly what they are doing. They are people who betrayed their country by getting wrong certificates signed by certain politicians that we are political workers. They did all of that and they found safe haven in Canada. And since the Canadian government is supported by a bona fide Khalistani, this Jagmeet character, he's a Khalistani. He believes in Khalistan. Right? He is, he is a true blue Khalistani. That's it. That's about it. That is how this ecosystem works. So this is the NIA report. And I've been saying this time and again, time and again, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it is. Right? So thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, press like, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.